What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist and today I'm back to talk to you about Star Wars. So with the final piece to the nine movie mega series of Star Wars, I decided to go back and re-watch the movies in order starting from episode one all the way to episode eight. And I've done it. <laughs> it was quite a wild ride. Um, and I noticed that nostalgia plays a huge part in the Star Wars movies because, well, they're not as great as I remember them being, for one. Yes, I know, hate me, throw stones at me, but when I was younger, I really, really enjoyed these movies. And seeing them again for a second, third, fourth time even, they're, they're not as great as I thought they were. Maybe it's just special effects or some I don't know it's just they're not hitting as much as they used to so I decided to go through and rate each of the ages so I will leave the two links to the videos where I go over the age of the Republic which is episode 1 2 and 3 and the age of rebellion which is episodes 4 5 and 6 where I rate them and I give you my overall opinions on each movie but for this video here, I will be going over the newest episodes, episodes 7 and 8, which is known as the Age of Resistance, where the final inklings of the rebellion of the Empire... No, yeah, rebellion, right? Because they're fighting the First Order, so yeah, we'll go with that. So, let's begin with episode 7, The Force Awakens. So when I first saw this movie in theaters, I was blown away. For one, these movies are just head over heels, just visual eye candy. Like the special effects, everything is so, so good that it almost makes you overlook certain flaws and the story writing and stuff like that. Because when you really step back and look, this is pretty much a remake of A New Hope. I believe because um, I mean it's pretty much you get your key you know resistance fighters and you go to destroy the new Death Star but this Death Star can kill five planets at once <laughs> um, essentially Kylo Ren is trying to be like his grandpa aka Anakin aka Darth Vader so again he's another broody I don't think he's a teen is he a teen I don't know but he's being broody and being seduced by the dark side. However, there is inklings of him trying to fight the dark side and go back to the light, as can be seen with the whole kind of working alongside with Rey, finding out that she's also a Force user, and then her resisting his Force abilities, and then the scene on the bridge with Han Solo, him trying to fight to the urge to let him live, that all plays a huge part as to is he really 100% dark side which Vader he wasn't 100% dark side uh, obviously Anakin was pretty good and then he went to the dark and then at the end he almost redeemed himself but not really because once you kill those younglings that's it <laughs> but anyway um, I do remember that probably the oh shit moment in this whole entire movie was right in the beginning where uh, Poe Dameron goes to shoot Kylo Ren, and he freaking stops it with the Force. He doesn't just stop him from shooting. He stops the blaster shot mid-air. This is something that I've never seen, and I was like, my jaw was wide open in the theater. I'm like, okay, this is badass. Like, this is it right here. No, that was a really great shot. Um, but as I kept watching the movie... Um, for the second time, because I've only seen it the one time at the theaters, and re-watching it, I noticed that there's a lot of coincidence. Like, what are the chances of the Millennium Falcon being on Jakku? What are the chances of Han and Chewie, you know, being right next to Jakku, and, like, going on to the Millennium Falcon? Like, how did Maz come across Luke slash Anakin's lightsaber, the blue one, not the green one. Like, how did she have that in her possession? Like, all these coincidences, it's like, you have a whole galaxy, and it's like, all these little things line up. Maybe it's the Force, maybe it's just storytelling. <laughs> but, um, 
it was it was interesting to see how how the story progressed but uh overall it's enjoyable i think the saving grace like i said is indeed the special effects just the way how everything looks so beautiful and just overall like the fights were amazing the end fight between kylo ren and ray that was pretty cool especially when he tries to pick up the uh, lightsaber and then ray is using the force to actually grab it herself that was pretty badass the one thing though that i was a little taken aback from was from the trailers was from like four years ago five years ago now at this point i it kind of made it seem that uh, finn was going to be the next big force user um, but actually, I was surprised that it was actually Rey. Um, but that's pretty cool, though, because now, with The Last Jedi, it's almost a different take that, oh, you think Rey's the good one, the light side, but maybe she's going to fall to the dark side. But with that, before I transition over to The Last Jedi, i got to give my overall ranking out of the 10, which I've been doing with all the other movies. And even though it's almost similar to A New Hope, um, I feel like nostalgia played a big part in it. Seeing C-3PO, Han Solo, Chewbacca, all the characters that we've seen throughout the years come back as, as like a, the older versions of themselves, that kind of hits you in the nostalgia feels. And uh, overall, the like I said, the special effects did it for me. So it was very enjoyable. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Moving on, we go to Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. So as I was saying here, I really enjoyed the duality of the light and the dark side, and how it almost seemed like the main characters, Rey and Kylo, were almost switching back and forth between the two. It was a very interesting take to kind of see if it's like, maybe Rey isn't going to be the savior, or maybe Luke won't be the savior, and maybe it has to be Kylo Ren, the child of Solo and Leia. But the more you look at it, Luke kind of was right. Like, why are they banking everything on one person? He, Luke even says it himself, he's like, one Jedi is really going to fight the entire order? Like, that doesn't make sense, like, he isn't the hope. Hope is what they ended up saying near the end of the movie, where ho hope is the spark or the embers that's going to fuel the next generation of people to fight the Order. So it's th they shouldn't be putting all these resources towards finding Luke, when what they should be doing is getting the... essentially making a last stand to die as martyrs and fuel the next generation of uh, force users which is kind of what they were alluding to with those kids at that casino planet thing uh, especially at the end with the little boy who uses the force to move the broom but i actually didn't catch that the first time in theaters so that was pretty cool um speaking of the casino planet i hated that whole section i thought it was a waste of time I, <laughs> like, what, they, it's like they go to this planet to find, like, some shifty guy to c break the code, and he ends up, you know, betraying them, and it, it, it was just a waste of time. I was way more interested in the duality of light side and dark side between Kylo and Rey, and since we're already on Kylo and Rey, let's talk about Snoke. Snoke apparently was... The big bad, you know, he was the Emperor Palpatine, or so we thought. He was training Kylo to become more of the dark side. And he was actually the reason why Kylo and Rey were able to speak via the Force and see visions of one another and whatnot. So all this time, I thought Kylo was, or not Kylo, Snoke was a waste of a character. Which he kind of is, <laughs> in my opinion. It's like, Snoke? Really? Who is this guy? We're, theories were flooding the internet. And then he dies. <laughs> but this dude was totally strong with the Force. As you can see him just playing around with Rey. But he wasn't strong enough. As you can see, he didn't notice Kylo turning on the lightsaber to basically cut him in half. 
mean, at first I was like, oh, you know, I, we've seen other characters get cut in half and still survive, Darth Maul. But that's not the case with uh, Snoke. He, he dead dead. <laughs> um, the other thing, too, with the whole uh, Kylo falling to the dark side was that it, this, this um, movie actually made it seem more important as to why Luke left. Seeing Kylo Ren, which was, I guess, his nephew... I believe. Yeah, because he's his sister's son, yeah. So Kylo Ren is his nephew. He was training him and other children to become Jedi, the next generation of Jedi. And he sensed this darkness in Kylo, and for a split second, he's like, I could snuff it out, I could stop this darkness, but I have to kill him. And in that instant, the dark, or the, uh, the emotion of killing him left, and all he was left with was shame. Why did he think this? Why did he succumb to weakness at that point in time? And lo and behold, at the he's at the point of almost killing him, Kylo, aka Ben, Ben Solo wakes up and sees Luke just about to kill him, and that pushes him deeper into the darkness. So in a way, this whole revival of the Jedi, revival of the light side pushing the further the generations of Skywalker, or I guess Solo, towards the light is all crumbling because of his split second of insecurity. And that hit him so hard, that's what caused him to just disappear, flee to that barren, desolate planet. And it took me a while to actually understand this, but after watching it for the second time, it's like, okay, it makes a little bit more sense. Because this movie does get a lot, a lot of hate. I remember there was like a petition to redo this movie, to like take it away from canon and make it again. But obviously these things aren't going to happen. These movies do take a lot of time, effort, and money to produce. And there's no way they'll do something like that. Just like with the whole Game of Thrones. Or like, redo season 8. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But anyway, um, with all these negatives that were being pushed on this movie, there was a lot of really amazing things. The sacrifice that that one lady did, I forgot her name, when she went light speed to crash into the fleet, that left me speechless in the movie theater. Visually, it was stunning, and it was a heroic sacrifice that really actually helped the survivors, you know, get to that planet and overall it was really beneficial to to everyone that was really amazing i didn't like the the, the general or whatever her name was so much but that little scene I, gu I guess was a good redemption for her and uh after snoke dies and ray and kylo fighting like the uh the knights or whatever they're not the knights of ray ren they're, that was going to be in the next movie but the guys in red that was a pretty badass fight Especially at the end, where Rey tosses her lightsaber to Kylo, and he like turns it on and turns it off, and you could see the freak hole in the guy's head. That was awesome. That was really badass. This movie was pretty entertaining. I will also give it an 8 out of 10. A lot of faults to it, but seeing it now for the second time, I feel like I can forgive some of them, just because of how much me, myself, as just... Somebody who likes Star Wars and isn't like criticizing every little thing. I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, it was visually stunning. Seeing the the inner turmoil of the light side and the dark side. And who's really turning to who. Because for a second there, I really thought Kylo Ren was going to go to the light. And Rey was going to go to the dark. But who knows? There's one more movie. The Rise of Skywalker. And that really can take things into any different way because all that's left of the resistance is now literally on the millennium falcon so but they did send out those distress signals to the outer rim so obviously you're gonna have other people to her cause uh, her being leia's cause and we'll see how this how this trilogy the age of resistance ends overall I'm pretty sure the special effects are going to be amazing, which is going to give many, many points in my book to Star Wars. Uh, but we'll see how the story actually is. J.J. Uh, Abrams is also doing this one, so hopefully it's better than The Force Awakens. 
and hopefully it's not just another Return of the Jedi <laughs> almost remake. But again, I do want to hear your thoughts below in the comments. Be sure to check out to the other two videos, which I'll link at the end. Um, the one where I go over the Age of the Republic and the Age of Rebellion. And uh, don't forget that I will also be putting out one more of these little reviews where I go over the video games. There's a ton of Star Wars video games, and I'll go over my top two or three favorite ones. So if you guys really want to be invested into Star Wars and you really want to have fun playing it, I'll tell you which ones to check out. And yeah, that's all I got for today. Um, let me know what you guys thought below, and I'll see you in the next one. This is the Sound Alchemist, part of Woodmind Syndicate, and I'll catch you then.